people with amazing stories that will empower your life. And today I'm very excited to have Dr. Sylvia Johnson on the show. Welcome to the show. Thank you. You're welcome. Dr. Johnson, OBGYN, tell me a little bit about you and um, who you are. Well, I'm originally a Florida girl. Okay. I grew up in Florida. I went to the University of Florida Medical School, and then I came to Atlanta to do my residency at Emory. And I stayed. Most residents stay where they do their, their training. And I've been here ever since. I was with a group for 11 years, so when I first started out, I was with a group. And some things changed in the environment, so I was the first to leave. And um, I was... I hired a consultant and the consultant actually told me that I should go with another group, hmm. but it didn't work out and I was led to go out by myself and okay. she said, oh, that's a mistake, you'll never make it. Mm. I said, well, that's what I'm going to do. Wow. And I've been in, in private practice for 15 years, so I made it. Wow, you did. And that's, that's a wonderful thing. Um, one thing that empowers me is when someone tells me I can't do it, I'm going to show them 10 ways how I can do it. Well, I would like to know a little bit about where you are in your life right now. Uh, we, you and I have talked before, and I know that you're somewhat in transition. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Why? And why now? Well, um, I told you I came to Atlanta after to do my training, and that was in 1984. And so this is 2014. I have been delivering babies for 30 years, <laughs> and I'm getting older, and I feel it. I was up last night. I delivered babies all weekend. Wow. And so then I usually have to work, but I'm here today. I'm so happy to be here. Yes. And so I'm tired. I love delivering babies, yes. but now I need to do something new um, that doesn't isn't so strenuous on my body. Okay. All right. That's, that's very good. So let me ask you this. Have you thought about what that is? Are you just... Um, are you reading or are you what, again what what what's motivating you right now I have thought about it I've been thinking about it since I was in my 40s <laughs> <laughs> for my transition it was supposed to be at 50 but it's gotten kind of past that okay. um, so but I still I've tried a few things I try to weight loss center because I want to help people okay. my goal is to okay. be an inspiration to women okay. and to do something that I feel good about that helps I don't want to do it just for the money Wonderful. and um, a lot of my colleagues do Botox and mm -hmm. spas and I said no I'm not gonna do that so mm -hmm. I figured we all need to lose weight mm -hmm. I'll do that well, I bought a franchise that didn't work out, okay. to make a long story short. So I let that go and I prayed on it. And now I am stepping out on faith. Wonderful. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm in the process. Wow. Well, you know, I'm, I'm a faith walker as well. And, you know, um, I met you. There was no, I don't believe in uh, coincidence. I know it was a divine appointment when you and I met. Um, I was referred to you by a friend. And just a few weeks ago, met you, and now we're here sitting talking about your story. Um, and I, I love when that happens because that's when you know that uh, there's more things going on than, than what we're just doing. Um, one thing that always intrigues me about, about a person is their whys. What causes them to do what they do? Um, what drives you? What drove you to become a, a OBGYN? What's driving you now to seek out this new path? What is it in you that maybe someone else may want to do something but they don't know how to take those steps what is it that's driving you and what would you say to someone that um, needed to take steps well what's driving me now and what was driving me before is different um, what's driving me now is God and okay. the Holy Spirit okay. and I I want to um, do what I ha I have a purpose to do I, I feel like everyone has a purpose okay. and the world is out of balance because most people aren't doing what they were purposed to do right. and some people feel like they can't do anything but everyone has a purpose everyone's purpose is different and it doesn't matter whether they feel that purpose is small it's important it's just like the body yes my finger is just as important as well it might not be just as important but it's important as my brain yes. um yes. I, ha I need all of my parts um so everyone should um follow what their spirit tells them mm -hmm. i feel like it's the holy spirit but everybody's faith is different yes. so there's a spirit inside of you mm -hmm. and most people know what it is but they kind of are afraid to do it okay Right. Well, you know, I think I read in some of your information that you've not always been a faith walker, but I believe that you took steps before you became a faith walker to propel you to where you are now. Can you tell me a little bit about that? What made you take those steps? Now it's your faith. I understand that. Mm -hmm. But before then, what was it? It was 
the spirit inside of me okay. that I was following. Um, of course, you know, everyone has, not everyone has the same basis mm -hmm. from their family. I didn't grow up a Christian, so I can't say that it was that, but my parents taught me to try to um, be educated. Okay. So I sought for an education. I really didn't know I wanted to be a doctor. I had okay. no mentors. I think wow. the most important thing that a person can do, like I said, is um, search inside of them. Mm -hmm. Everyone, like I said, has a purpose, yes. um, and then you have to make a plan. You can't you can't succeed without making a plan. That's so right. first, you need to just really dig deep inside of yourself, if, and and find what you feel that you what your passion is. Yes. Usually, you'll have a passion for something. So I had a passion for helping people. Okay. okay? And then I had to figure out how I could do that, what the avenues it. were, and then I made a plan, <clears throat> and then I figured out a way to make that plan work. And so you're still helping people, and you're, it sounds like that your next step, you still want to continue to help people. Um, if you were to go back, and I, I, I hear people do this all the time, and I said I would never do this, but I'm going to do this. If you were to go back and talk to yourself, your 20-year-old self, what would you tell yourself right now with the wisdom that you have now, uh, how would you empower your 20-year-old self? How would I empower my 20-year-old self? Mm -hmm. Well, my walk would be the same. I'm satisfied. I don't look back. Everyone makes mistakes, and I, I'm satisfied with my life as it is and what I'm doing. But again, if I could change one thing, yes. it would be my faith. Okay. Because when I was going through the hard times, any, any process that you go through or any goal that you have is difficult. So there are difficulties along the way, yes. and that makes life difficult. Mm -hmm. And it's much easier for me now that I know that I'm not in control, that God is, and that I can have peace because that's what, you know, Jesus left us. And that would be the one thing that I would change. I wouldn't really change anything else, but it would make, it would have made my life a lot more peaceful, a lot yes. less stressful. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes, yes. I agree with you on that. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so now tell me where you are as far as your staff. I've been there. I think you have an amazing staff. Um, but it takes an amazing person to have amazing people work with them. And I feel that you give a lot to your, of yourself to your staff and they give it right back to you. So tell me a little bit about the day-to-day -day, uh, uh, ins and outs of being uh, a doctor. Well, I think the most important thing is that we're there to serve the patients. So that's what we do our best to do is make um, the patients that come in feel comfortable and feel like they're important. I'm a real stickler about being on time. Yes, I know. <laughs> I've been to your office. <laughs> well, because people, everybody's time is important. That's right. You know, um, and so, and that's our basic thing is just making the person feel comfortable mm -hmm. because when you come to an OBGYN as a woman, it's, yeah. it's kind yes, of I intimidating <laughs> to, it's not the most pleasant exam to have and you're already a little bit, you know, you're a little bit intimidated. Yes. So we try to make people feel comfortable. Yes. Well, I do want to tell you this, that um, I, I, uh, my time there, it has been a good experience with me. I love the fact that you are very, you know, in my face as far as what I need to do and where I am and everything, and I really appreciate that. And I know a lot of other women will appreciate that as well. Um, the other thing I wanted to tell you is that um, I feel that by you being who you are today and, and, and standing up, I really feel that your next steps that you're going to take are going to be bigger than the ones you've already taken. Mm -hmm. If you can imagine that, if you can imagine that, that you're going to be able to move forward even faster and empower more people. Well, good, because that is a goal, to help other people. Like I said, and helping other people empower themselves by being an example would be wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Well, I have no doubt that you'll do just that. Well, what we're going to do is just... Um, Think about what's coming up next for you. We're going to watch you. We're going to, uh, I'm, I'm going to watch, you know, and, and to see. And if there's anything that I can do to be a part of your next step, I would love to do that because I feel that you're here now with me for a reason mm -hmm. and I feel connected with you and I want to be able to be a part of what's coming up next for you. Well, great, because you would be a wonderful asset. It's an honor to be here. And Thank you. I'm sure that your show is going to be inspiring and empowering to people of every faith, of every walk in life, because um, people do. This is, like I said, this is a difficult world to walk in, yes. to live in, and it's very stressful. There's always something. But 
if you just remember that, well, again, I'm, I'm very strong on God. God is in control. That's fine. You're not. That's fine. Um, and just do what you can do, the best that you can do. Yes. I always tell people, it's your attitude. I told my daughter, my 21-year-old, it's your attitude. Yes. It's how you look at things. Yes. Be positive about it. That's um, right. And always just do your best. That's right. And sometimes that is very hard to do, especially when you, when life just happens, mm -hmm. you know, you know, Maybe someone's running behind schedule or something, someone cuts you off in traffic and it's very challenging to stay focused and to, um, to do the right thing always. But if we want to continue to move forward, we have to do that and we cannot allow uh, the stressors that, we, that come across. We're going to have stressors no matter what. We're going to have stressors, but we cannot allow those things to hinder us, to stop us, because if we do, then we're giving in. And that's one of the things that propel me. That's why I say it's up to you yes. to make the difference. And we can't blame anyone else. Um, we can, but uh, the blame is, should be placed on ourselves. Um, and just a little bit about uh, where I get my inspiration from. I get my inspiration from God as well. Uh, but I also get my inspiration and, and empowerment from empowering other people. When I'm able to speak life into other people and I see them move forward and I know that I've helped in some way, that empowers me to go out and do it again and again and again. Um, and I'm sure you can attest to this. One of the things that um, has just been really uh, key for me is my goal is to not to teach give a man a fish, but it's to teach them to fish. And I feel that you're doing the same thing because your next steps are going to be giving back to other people. And as they watch you, as you well know, people are always watching whether you know or not, they're gonna want to do the same thing. Yes. And a, a big part of being able to empower people is just feeling good about yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's where my strengths are, are encouraging women, mm -hmm. I don't see very many men, mm -hmm. but in my practice, women just yeah. believing in themselves, being positive again about themselves, knowing that they can't make a difference. So that's the way that I like to empower people. Okay, well, one question also for women's health care. Um, what is one of the most important things that you feel that we need to be aware of, concerned about? Um, what would you say? And it could be more than one thing. Being proactive, okay. I mean, the things that are difficult to do, the normal cliche that most doctors tell you, get plenty of rest, exercise, okay. and diet. But that's really true because, uh, you know, there are too many stressors and toxins and everything in our environment. And because of that, it taxes the body a lot. And in order to be healthy, in order to help people, in order to uh, be empowered, you have to have energy and you That's have fine. to be healthy. So in order to be healthy, you have to do the things that most of us are struggling to because we don't have time because we're juggling so many other yes. things. But you have to put yourself first. I tell them, you have to put yourself first. You can't put your job first, which is what most people are pressured to do. They're pressured to put their jobs first. Yeah. And you have to put yourself first and exercise, rest, and try to eat healthily. Well, Dr. <laughs> Sylvia Johnson, I thank you so much for being here. And thank you so much. Come right back with us. All right. <laughs> you did fantastic. Thank you. We're here today with Derek Lee. Hi, Derek. Hey, how are you? Fine, thank you. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Okay, Derek, tell me a little bit about your story. I know it, but I want everyone else to know it. So yeah. tell me about your amazing story. Well, you know, my background's really in business. And uh, my wife, uh, well, we got married. She joined the Air Force. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I needed to get into government as a civilian because we kept moving and I always had to find another job. Yes. And so I kept working my way up thinking, all right, this is like the path I should be on and, and uh, you know, would work really hard at my job, get a promotion, work hard at that job and continue to get promotions. And uh, we actually moved out to Atlanta because my wife got a job at the CDC, the Centers right. for Disease Control. And that moved us out here and um, I was actually running the uh, call center for the Department of Veteran Affairs here. Uh, and that really opened my eyes to what's possible running such a large team. There was about 60 people that worked for me. Mm -hmm. And what was happening though is I was sacrificing career for health. Oh. And my health started degrading fast. And I was in my mid-30s okay. and just chronic sinus infections. 
and uh, got to the point where the, the managers and we would get together to comfort eat. Mm. And so we'd order piles of chicken wings and we'd be <laughs> piling those things down. And you know, we didn't really think about like health. I wasn't exercising, I wasn't doing anything right. Mm -hmm. And uh, I started just having like, you know, pains and, and uh, just couldn't really function. And I went to my doctor and the doctor said, well, you've, we need to go see a, a gastroenterologist, a GI doctor. Okay. And I did and uh, the GI doctor, you know, ran a whole bunch of tests and, you know, they call you a couple days later to give you the results. But well, when he called, he just said, you know, look, uh, you need to come in okay. so I can go over these results with you. And I was like, okay, that, that doesn't sound like a, yeah. a good thing. And he's like, and you need to bring your wife. Mm. And I'm like, okay, this is really not that, good. That never sounds good. <laughs> so we, you know, went in not knowing exactly what to expect, but expecting kind of a bad story. And I don't remember exactly everything he said. Um, it, it was kind of a surreal experience, but I just remember a few things of, you know, here's your results. You've got uh, an autoimmune disorder, ulcerative mm. colitis, where your body doesn't think your colon belongs in, in your body. It's attacking it. And it's just a terrible way of life. Wow. And, you know, then he started going on and on around, like, the future. And that I'd be on medications for my whole life to try and control this. Mm. That at some point, I'm going to have to have my colon removed because mm. I was going to get cancer from it. Oh, my it. goodness. And, you know, and then finally he said, you're not going to be able to have any more kids. And that's the point my wife and I just broke down. Wow. And because we felt like our family wasn't done, we had uh, my daughter at the time, and she was, uh, I think, three. Hmm. And we just you know, felt like we weren't complete as a family. Sure. And uh, so honestly, I just gave up. And I just said, OK, fine, doc. You know, whatever, you, whatever I got to be on, whatever prescriptions, just give it all to me. You know, I, don't, there's, I don't have any other options. And I followed that procedures for probably the next year and a half mm -hmm. and about every three months I would get a little better and then go back to being worse and I would fire my doctor essentially you know <laughs> I and I don't blame <laughs> I would go back to my my primary care and I would say I need another referral and he would refer me out and I, but I kept doing that because each doctor was doing slightly different but pretty much the same thing of like look there's nothing you can do we're just going to try and give you the best lifestyle that you mm. can mm -mm -mm. so it was after about a year and a half that I really decided to do something different. Okay. And I did a lot of research on um, some alternative cares, like what, what can people do themselves, like personal responsibility, not just medication, but what personal responsibility okay. could I do to help me uh, at least gain some of my lifestyle back? Okay. And I ran into uh, some doctors that were actually using like physician grade nutrition okay. in their practice. And uh, they were following certain protocols that really helps the body do its own um, healing, if you will. Okay. And I, I did a lot of study on you know, theology of this, and I really think that providence, God's okay. providence, really plays a big role in this because he's yes. designed the world to work a certain way. Yes. And I really believe that he's designed our bodies to be amazing healers mm but we've got to feed it right. And, and as a society, we don't feed ourselves right. You're, you're absolutely right, because chicken wings, that's, that's just not right. <laughs> it's not. Yes. So, and a lot of people, you know, come to me and ask me like, well, what, you know, what, what is it that I should be doing? Like, mm -hmm. how, do I, how do I know? And, you know, one of the things I did was I, I found a great book out there um, called the NutriSearch Comparative Guide to Nutritional Supplements. Okay. This is the latest version, the fifth edition of The Professional. And this studies about every possible nutritional supplement out there wow. and ranks them so you can kind of figure out what to do. And, and I you know, ran across the brand that was rated uh, one of the top three. It was their editor's choice. And so that kind of led me down this path to figure out which brand I should be doing. And long story short, you know, what happened was I just started, I kept on my medications, but I kept now supplementing and eating better and okay. going for walks and doing some of the things right. And I would found that not only did I feel so much better, but I could start weaning myself off some of the medications. Wow. And so it was after just about four months of you know, doing the right things, I was able to wean all the way off the medications without any of the symptoms returning. And uh, you know, for now, it's been it's been almost five years without any medication. That's amazing. So, yeah. Derek, what did your doctor say? Yeah. So, 
my doctor, most doctors are only trained for a short period of time on nutrition, yes. so they just, it doesn't fit their style. <clears throat> and when I went to him and I kind of said, you know, here's what, what I take in, he didn't write anything down I was telling him until I got to that probiotics was part of it. And he's like, oh, I know what that is. And so he wrote that down in his book and it was, I, it was very interesting. Um, and he just, here's something he said that really stuck with me. He said, well, I'm not gonna recommend anybody else do what you did because I don't think people will take proactive choices. People today who come see me just wanna get on medications. Wow. And I was like, that's kind of a cynical view. Like, because yes, that's how I was at first, but I, if I would have gone to my doctor and says, isn't there something else I can do? And you would have said there is an option, I would have taken it in a heartbeat. But Derek, you know, uh, he's partly right because a lot of people do that because yeah. they're programmed to do that. Um, I have family members that's programmed to do that. Yes. Um, I, I know that. So he's partly right because most people are not going to be proactive, but you are. You yeah. were. Yeah. And so keep going. I didn't mean to interrupt. Keep no. Going. And, you know, it just kind of evolved. And, and it was after about being off medications for a year mm -hmm. that my wife and I said, well, I wonder if we can have a child because this doctor said we can. And sure enough, she gets pregnant immediately. Wow. And, and so our son Caleb was born. Uh, and... You know, that was like a turning point for us mm -hmm. because here's, and I want to get into just the inspiration piece of this. So here I got my health back in a very miraculous way that yeah. I know it wasn't just me. Mm -hmm. And I know it wasn't just the nutrition, but mm -hmm. that was a catalyst for me to get to where yes. I was. Yes. So we started to figure out what we wanted to do. And my wife and I had a long talk okay. and we were talking about just the rat race we felt like we were in. Mm. You know, we were both uh, waking up at the crack of dawn, getting the kids off to daycare, and then driving in Atlanta traffic to get yes. to work, oh my. working the government job for a full day, and then come home, the traffic's always worse on the way home, and then, you know, you get home, you pick up the kids, and like, we'd cook dinner, and we have like an hour to spend with the kids before it's time for their bed. Wow. And I just felt that was so unfulfilling. The only time we got to spend with them was on the weekend. So we really sat down and, and we've been doing some really smart things about money. We okay. took uh, some financial courses. Uh, Dave Ramsey was a big uh, motivator and we started paying down debt, reducing our expenses. And then we decided to go ahead and launch our own business. Hmm. And how did I know which business to pick? Well, the brand that I had been taking of nutrition that helped me so much yes. has an opportunity before. It's a direct selling company. Wow. And so I was like, okay, I would be re stupid to not pick them mm -hmm. because of the difference it made. People need to hear my story. Yes, absolutely. And I think that's really the, the impetus is when people feel your passion and they know that you're trying to help them, and you're not trying to you know, sell them yes. something, mm -hmm. like people really feel, okay, I, yeah, let's do that. That's how I felt. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and so, you know, I think that really made a, a big difference. And so I started working in the wee hours. I, we actually turned off television, cut, cut the cable, and that, that those hours of TV watching that we used to do in the evening was instead business and like meeting with clients and starting to help people. And for us, it was, I started when my son was born. I took off my paternity leave for me. <laughs> uh, and I took that time off to really start the business and then start working those eight to 10 hours a week for about three years. And that's when we had that momentous discussion to say it's time and I was able to pen my resignation letter to the CDC and tell them I want to help a lot more people now and I can do that now on my own following God's plan versus just working in a regular nine to five job. Well, a couple things, I mean, just amazing and, and I could listen to this over and over again, but yeah. a couple things I really want to point out that you said you turned the television off. Yes. Okay, how long did you turn the television off? Uh, it's still off. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, like for us, television watching will be typically a once a week experience. We like to, you know, rent a movie or something. And like that's our TV is like a movie. Wow. But, um, you know, news and some of those things I feel are, are not feeding us the right information. Sure. And, you know, I love this station and what they do. And, you know, I think that really what I want people to get is there's time for something better in your life. Okay. Because sometimes I didn't have time. Mm -hmm. Like I just was raising a brand new baby, mm -hmm. working a full-time job, mm -hmm. you know, I had no time. And so I had to make time somewhere. Yes. 
yes. and it's all about priorities. And so for me, television was less important than having a future for my family. Well, tell me very briefly about a power of margin. Yeah, so power of margin became clear uh, as again, we talked about margin and that I lowered my expenses and gained my income. So now I had a gap that I could close between expenses and income. That's what allowed me to launch out and do what I feel like God's pulled me to do. Yes. So power of margin is teaching people those kind of concepts. And so now we're going beyond just direct selling. I still use that as a tool for people to help get that income up. Okay. But I'm teaching them concepts of how to be more efficient with your time, how to get some of your time back, mm. um, how to deal with your finances. You still have a car payment, you still running credit cards, or you, you still got school loans. Like, what do we need to do so that your your passive debt is less? Because mm -hmm. a lot of times people talk about passive income, passive income, and passive income is a lovely thing, but we all have passive expenses. Yeah. And how do we lower those every day, every month expenses? Because that's what's really driving us to mediocrity, is we, we buy too much stuff, we try to raise our lifestyle up to match the Joneses, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden we're like, 20 years we're in about the same financial position we were. And you can use the power of margin in, in every area of your life. And one thing that mm -hmm. you've really helped me, I, I think about this, and you said that the television needs to be off mm -hmm. at least an hour before you go to bed. Yeah. And yeah, I've, I'm listening to you. I'm doing Good. things that you've said do, and, and I'm, I'm growing, I'm feeling better, um, taking some of the supplements that you're taking, yeah. and I just feel like I'm doing something positive for me. Um, Derek, I want to thank you for being on the show and sharing your story, and we just want to, I want to encourage you to continue doing what you're doing. I think it's just amazing. I wish you well. I love the fact that you are a man of faith and a family man mm -hmm. and that you've changed your life. And uh, just thank you for taking the steps to create the life you're meant to take. Great. Thanks. Thank you.